quick before this video starts, we have just hit 100 subscribers. Thank you so much for helping me hit this milestone. In celebration of this, I will be making a Q&A. At the top of the description, you will find a link to an Instagram post where you can ask me at most three questions that will be answered in a future video. If you don't have an Instagram account, you are more than welcome to comment on this video things you would like to ask me. Anyway, ranking radio ad albums. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be ranking all of Radiohead's studio albums. For those who don't know, Radiohead is an alt-rock group that put their name on the map thanks to their early 90s rock albums, such as The Bands and the critically acclaimed OK Computer. Then in the 2000s, the band started making more experimental electronic influenced music such as Kire and Amnesiac and then closed the decade by going full circle and making a very warm sounding rock album known as In Rainbows. And finally in the 2010s they released two very different albums which we shall discuss later. This list shall not include live albums such as I Might Be Wrong or compilation remasters such as OK Not OK and Kid Amnesia which relates to Kid Amnesia. The exhibition, can you please bring it to Nintendo Switch? Please? Also, if you want to read more in-depth reviews of these albums, link to my blog is in the description. Do people actually read my blog posts? Anyway, with that being said, let's get into the rankings. Number 9. Pablo Honey Shocking, I know. This was the band's debut. As they were trying to find their sound, what came out was a group of rough, forgettable and cheesy songs with very little substance. The only two songs on here I did enjoy were Creep. Look, I don't care what you say, it's a good song, and Thinking About You, which is more in line with the band's later works. That's it. I gave the album a decent, a strong one. Bland. That's all there is to say. Number 8. Amnesiac. Okay, we have now entered the good album zone. Any record from this point onward is at least good. The only Radiohead album I don't like is Pablo Honey. Every album from now on is either good, great, or one of my favourite albums of all time. Well, I mean, this album is decent, but not bad. Open and Packed Like Sardines in a Crushed Tin Box is one of my favourite Radiohead songs in general. Tom's deep voice and the understated sign tone lead melody work so well together. Pyramid Song is absolutely gorgeous and also works as this album's How to Disappear Completely, even this is a collection of leftovers from Kid A. You and Who's Army is another piano-driven song which works as a very nice interlude. I Might Be Wrong is one of the more energetic songs on here. The guitar sounds so crunchy and rich. Knives Out reminds me a lot of the more subdued moments on OK Computer. And Close the Life in a Glass House is another favourite thanks to its jazz influence sound. I have a soft spot for jazz. So while it's not very mind-blowing or groundbreaking compared to other albums, it's still a fine listen. I give it a decent to strong six. Number seven, The Bends. The band's sophomore release brings a new sound led by sad guitars and sad vocals. The so-called Soft Boy off the Radiohead catalog, we see the band go in a more introspective direction. High and Dry is a straight up Brit pop song with acoustic guitars with everything. Fake Plastic Trees is one of Radiohead's saddest songs from the pre-Kid A era. I love the vocals on here. Nice Dream is similar, but this time a bit faster. Just is one of the harder hitting songs on here and one of the few ones on this album I did enjoy. Bulletproof I Wish I Was returns to the melancholic feel I liked the most of this album for. But I found my favorite songs on here are Black Star and Street Spirit as they sound so hopeless and mournful, executing those feelings in very different ways. Black Star uses more bombastic guitars whilst Street Spirit uses atmosphere to convey this emotion. A mixed bag to say the least, but the songs I did enjoy are some of my favourites the band ever made. I gave it a decent to strong 7. Number 6. OK Compute. Wait, let me explain. I said that every album that isn't Pablo Honey is good. I don't hate this album. Please don't come writing at my house. Look, I enjoyed OK Computer, don't get me wrong, but I find it to be a bit overrated, similar to Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. The opening stretch of four songs, aka Airbag, Paranoid Android, Subterranean Homesick Alien, and Exit Music for a Film are flawless songs, in my opinion. Karma Police with Fit a Happier provide a very haunting combination. 
and of course my favourite Radiohead song, No Surprises, pops up on here too. But apart from those couple of tracks, the rest are fine or very forgettable, especially Lucky and The Tourist. I gave it a strong 7 to a light 8. Not bad by any means, just not quite as hard hitting as some other Radiohead records in my opinion. Number 5. Hail to the Feath. The band's longest album and final record released during their time at EMI, this album is a blend of the experimental stuff from the early 2000s and the mellow alt-rock the band released in the 90s. Some highlights include the chaotic opener 2 plus 2 equals 5, sit down stand up with its atmospheric keys and robotic percussion, I love the piano on Sail to the Moon, Where I End and New Begin is a favourite from this album. The echoey vocals, the amazing guitar work, the drums, the dreamy effects and the wash is an amazing track overall. There, there's drums sound like they were borrowed from an Amazonian tribe, mixed metosis with its fuzzy guitar tone, and scatterbrain sound like something from OK Computer. I gave this album a strong 8 to a light 9. Did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. Number 4. A Moon Shaped Pool their latest album at the time of recording this video. Whilst Radiohead is often made fun of for being sad, this album is just depressing. I can safely say that all the songs on here express either sadness, heartbreak, confusion or paranoia. This album was made after Tom York's divorce and producer Nigel Godrich losing his father. Opener, Burn the Witch is very grandiose and the strings on here sound amazing. Daydreaming as sleepy and melancholic in its bare piano melody. Dex Dark and Desert Island Disc give off a similar vibe of isolation and paradise. Full Stop is the most paranoid song on here, contrasted by Glass Eyes, which is definitely my favourite song on here. Listen to this song while walking around comic blocks early in the winter morning. It's a different experience altogether. The numbers and present tense are again similar in their use of acoustic guitars. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Sailor, Rich Man Poem and Mega Man Thief is another great song. I love the barren instrumental at the beginning of the song. And of course, the so-called saddest Radiohead song closes the album in an incredibly depressing way. This album is heartbreaking and not for the uninitiated in this kind of music. I give the album a light to decent 9. Number 3. The King of Limbs. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, before you go to the comments saying how could you put the king of limbs over OK Computer, let me explain. People often say that this is one of, if not the worst Radiohead album, but that is definitely not the case. Just because this album focuses around repetitive loops doesn't mean it's bad. One thing to note is that this album is a grower. Repeat listens will be necessary for one to fully enjoy this record. On first listen I was like, this wasn't that bad, but it really didn't impress me. But given its shorter length I could listen to it on a whim whenever I wanted. Bloom and Feral have these hypnotic sounds that put me in a trance. Morning Mr Magpie, Little by Little and Lotus Flower are all very groovy songs that give this album life. And the closing stretch of songs, Codex, Give Up the Ghost and Separator are some of my favourite Radiohead songs period. I gave it a strong 9 to a light 10. I saw on reddit someone saying that the king of limbs to in rainbows is how a kid a is to ok computer and I fully stand by that affirmation. Number 2. Kid a. Speaking of which, Kid a. This album is cold, barren, apocalyptic, lonely, depressed, oh never mind it's idiotech, then sad again. At first this album was not received positively, however over time it was slowly accepted as being incredibly well made. Open Air Everything in its Right Place was my most streamed Radiohead song on Spotify even though it isn't my favourite from them, but it is amongst their best ones. The title track and its warm melodies, the national anthem with its brassy chaos, how to disappear strings and ambience, Tree Fingers sample guitars that create a serene atmosphere, Optimistic and in limbo with the dreamy guitars. <laughs> morning bell and its very morning sounding melodies. And closer motion picture soundtracks, moody ambience. It's a well rounded album with no low points. A 10 out of 10. But there is one album that I prefer. Number 1 In Rainbows. This album is the happiest Radiohead has ever been. This album feels like a summer afternoon. This album is amazing. 
that is all there is need to say. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, thank you so much for helping me hit 100 subscribers. Don't forget to ask me some questions. I want us to know each other better. You know what I'm saying? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and maybe even subscribe. Let's see how long it takes for us to hit 150 subscribers. That's all for today. Take care. And if you're watching this video at the time of release, I wish you all happy holidays.